can run, and they're in better shape now for third. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott. From the right hash, this from 53. And Elliott puts this one through. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Falcons offense, Charles, heading back out there, coming off a 10-6 season, made the playoffs again. But coming off the previous season when they blew that Super Bowl to the Patriots, I think a lot of folks were expecting more in 2017. So now turn the page. What can we expect this year? They want to return to explosiveness on offense. I mean, that's what they've got to get to. You mentioned 2016. They rolled up points like crazy. Absolutely obliterated people on the offensive side of the ball. They want to get back to that. Get Julio Jones. Get him spread free again. They drafted Calvin Ridley out of Alabama to help with that. All right, they can run the football, obviously, with Devontae Freeman. On the defensive side, the mantra is speed, speed, speed. And they want to get Vic Beasley back, chasing the quarterback, where he led the league in sacks two seasons ago. On second down, Freeman. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory they give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs and he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end a guy that you can line up anywhere in the slot out wide in tight doesn't really matter because he has such great skills you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense and there he was in the slot for the catch So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Looking downfield for Joan. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. 
Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. The Eagles offense heading out. You know, last year at this time, Charles, we said this was a franchise that's kind of been a neutral for a while. They're not neutral anymore. Defending Super Bowl champs. What do you think, favorites again? I think so because this team has few holes, if any. Look, your quarterback, Carson Wentz, gets hurt before the season's over. His backup, Nick Foles, wins Super Bowl MVP. Wentz probably would have won the regular season if he finished out the year. Offensive line, one of the best in the game. Passing game keeps getting better. Multiple runners who can run it and catch it. Flip it over to defense. Tremendous defensive front. They can just swarm and get after you. Great coordinator, very creative. The big thing for them, they have to take everyone's best shot week in and week out during the season. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and ten. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. They'll throw. And Jeffrey's got it. Alshon Jeffrey. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Alshon Jeffrey, 70 yards. And the Eagles had six to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. for the extra point, Jake Elliott. Elliott good with a PAT, and the lead grows to 10-0. So that'll do it for the first quarter as we kick off another season, 10-zip our score, and we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two, as we'll see one following the score on the final play before break. <laughs> Elliott now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. This offense trots back out there now, and as they do, Charles, one thing to point out that we saw a second ago are some of the new rules in the NFL this year regarding kickoffs. Yeah, nowadays, the kickoff team, no more running starts. Remember that when you can you kind of circle a guy around and here he goes? No more. You have to start, you know, close to the ball. And when it's kicked, then you get to take off and go. So you can't build up your speed that way. Also, when you're returning it, remember those wedges that we used to say where guys would form together, two or three guys? 
no more of those. So it'll be a lot more man-on-man, one-on-one blocking. And also they have rules about where people have to be when the ball's kicked, where they have to be when the ball's caught. So to me, it's much more like a punt return than it is an actual kickoff return. So I'm eager to see if teams now take their punt returners, those nifty guys who make people miss in the open field, and make them the kickoff returners as well, because I think you can still get big plays in this area if you have the right people back there. Now it's Ryan. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. down Ryan he was looking for Mohamed Sanu there and it's second down I tell you Brandon this defense is playing with some confidence haven't allowed a point yet flying to the football I'm telling you it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap another nice job there to force an incompletion Complete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Nigel Bradham brings him down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. From the shotgun, Ryan. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Alshon Jeffrey working his way back out there now to help lead this offense. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. It's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Coming in, he really liked his chance of having a big year based on a terrific offseason. And runs like that on opening weekend show that he's right. to throw now on first down. And this is Ertz on the right side. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice.
Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And it's third and short. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. He'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks. And while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind <laughs> or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Earlier this half, you were wondering how the defense was going to handle him defensively. Were they going to bottle him up at different levels, so to speak, is what you said. What have you seen so far? Well, I think they've been absolutely terrific because it feels like on every play, if we were watching this in the film room, when we clicked off the film or stopped it, you would see 11 shirts of that same color right there in the frame trying to tackle it. That's what you're looking for. Now Ryan on second down. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. A reminder coming up at halftime, it's the season debut of the coach, Jonathan Coachman in Orlando, as we look ahead to all the action coming up this opening weekend. And of course, we'll also take a look back at this first half. First and ten, it's Ryan. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. Clock running, and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. On second down, Ryan. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Martin, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting the 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. two-yard line here and brought down there. Well, they do get five there, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. 
he wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Going long here for Wallace. And that is caught. One-handed. Oh, my. He pulled it in. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Mike Wallace. An 80-yard touchdown. And the Eagles add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. <laughs> Elliott on for the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point, and that makes our score 17-0. Elliott now to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now let's discuss Julio Jones. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us. But sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae Freeman that time. And now it's second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. And hang on here. Freeman shaking up. Remaining on the ground after that last play. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. The Falcons on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third down and 12. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So we have reached halftime here in the Thursday night opener as we'll check in for the first time with the newest member of our Madden family. It's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Looking forward to joining the crew this year. We'll get back to you guys in Philly in just a moment. But first, let's look ahead to opening weekend right here in 2018. 
one of the best of the early games. We'll highlight it there. The Giants in for a stern test at home at MetLife Stadium as they'll square off against the Jacksonville Jaguars. As for the 4 o'clock game, some good ones there as well. One being in Charlotte, where it'll be the Panthers taking on the Dallas Cowboys. And finally on Monday night, a doubleheader to start the new year. The Jets and Lions and Matt Patricia's debut, followed by Rams Raiders in the return of John Gruden to Oakland. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. This one taken from the seven. Oh, good footwork on the span. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42-yard line. Great return. Any return that gets you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock Dalvin away and bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. The Eagles send out their punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> and he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Let's go. 
Ryan now off the boot line. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And fantastic field position has them just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line in the red zone. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now it's a Johnny. A good display of footwork. It gets him just inside the five to the four. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Zach Ertz from four yards out. And the Eagles take advantage of good field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Elliott now to add the extra point. Elliott good with a PAT. And the lead is now 24. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. In plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. Elliott now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They have been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. Second down, here's Ryan. And he hits his running back, Tevin Coleman. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight yards. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense.
The Falcons on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and four. Out of the gun. It's Ryan. And that is incomplete. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. There's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Now Sproles. 12 yards on the return that time, and that will come the offense as they take over. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in the team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Flushed out right, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion, or even worse, an interception. only up to about the 35. The safety, Keanu Neal there to make the tackle. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Eagles on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Now Foles. And he connects with Ertz. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They give him 12 yards and a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Here's Foles. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. I think it's pretty safe to say that when you're up three touchdowns, the last thing you want to do is hang one up there and put it in jeopardy and possibly get it intercepted. You get a nice lead, you should be able to protect it. But if you get careless with the football, look out. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary now on third. Hey, 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 hey. Third, 380. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left. This is caught inside the 15. 
And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Malshawn Jeffrey, already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Eagles continue to roll. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Elliott on for the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. Elliott now to kick this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up the yardage. First down. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now. First and 10 at the 40. First down. It's caught over the middle. Hooper. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. Looking to throw on second down. Ryan toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. The Falcons on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This will be third and 5. From the gun, it's Ryan. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Matt Bosher now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. All right, time for us now to discuss Alshon Jeffrey. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. Hey, 
The Eagles on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. then quickly brought down, but a nice little game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. so far that probably should have been their first but at least it's fourth down oh man that was close the opportunity to change momentum big play right in his hands unable to come down with it a sigh of relief no doubt on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground the Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Falcons will get it first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. To throw on second down, Ryan throwing the out route incomplete. It's Freeman, and he'll get it up here this time to the 21. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. 
And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Here's Matt Bosher now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here with this lead and the football things obviously looking good, but maybe you know, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them, protect them, take care of the ball, move it downfield, run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. They'll start out on the ground with a J. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Hot, 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 hot. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. The Eagles on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. Four down, four down. To that, 180. Here's a Jay. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Now that was a big time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Forty-four on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Fielded just inside the 20. We call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget <laughs> today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because you're not going to win. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the 
the sack. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Looking to throw on second down. Ryan. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. They go play action here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him, and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. fake here on first down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete we have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers everything seemingly has been contested and that's another nice job there to force an incompletion they've been very cohesive knowing each other's moves all game long and they've been on the spot just about every time and they've held them in check on the scoreboard After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Again on second and ten, it's Ryan. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. On third down, Ryan. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone, deep ball, short ball, and that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. Now Ryan. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Rasul Douglas picks it. And that will write a finish to this ball game. Well, my friend, for the players, it's good for them to get that first game under their belts. For you and I, that first Thursday night game also good for us to get that under our belts, wasn't it? It was no longer preseason. We were into the regular season, the first game of the year. And you know, all eyes were watching this one. Everyone was excited that football was back. It is just special. You could just feel it. It's so good to have the pigskin back out there. It'll be crisp fall weather before we know it. You got that right, but I love the build up to it, right? All day long anticipating it. And then we got here and we saw a game, the first game of the year. Let's keep going. So for the Eagles, they begin the new campaign with a victory here in front of the home crowd in the Thursday opener. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week where they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.